Today, I'm gonna to finish the street sign gas tank for the Barbie camper and get the four wheel drive working. I've already got a hole drilled in it. Um, so now I just have to figure out how I wanna mount it because obviously this is just thin street sign aluminum. So I can't just like drill and tap it. Um, if I had nut certs, I could do nut certs, but they wouldn't be watertight, so it would leak. So I kind of have to make a little block of aluminum that has threads in it that goes here with this bolt pattern that I can weld onto the tank. And then that can be right there. It'll be, get covered up by that. Good spot for that old hoodie. Yeah, it's an old hoodie that I destroyed. So now it just hangs on the mill and is the rag for wiping off all the grime. Boy, I really like milling. my fun on the mill here. I got this kind of roughed in um, and now I decided uh, to get it all nice and pretty. I'm just gonna cut that out with the skill saw and then take it to the belt sander and make it all smooth and polished up because making round weird shapes on a completely manual mill is not fun. <laughs> with a filter in it so we don't suck up any residual bits of aluminum. And as soon as I weld this on, we'll uh, test and see if it holds fuel. Well, got the fuel tank bung all welded in. Looks nice and minty and fuel pumps bolted on. And uh, yeah, I think it's about time to test and see if this thing holds water and also see how much it holds. Uh, looks like just this bottom portion is two gallons. That's a good sign. We might even have four gallons up in here. Actually, probably more than that, four and a half. Dude, I think this is gonna be five gallons. Wow, my guess was way off. In a good way. Yeah, in a good way, <laughs> right. That's awesome. It's funny because this one is like the first fuel tank I made that would actually be relatively easy to calculate the volume of it because it's all pretty much straight angles, straight lines and angles. So you just divide it into like rectangles, triangles and do the math. But obviously that's not worth doing. Where are we at, four and a half? Oh yeah, it's solidly a five gallon fuel tank. Yeah, we'll call it five and a quarter. Five and a quarter gallons of fuel capacity. Now, we'll let that sit here while we're eating lunch. I'll dry it off real quick and see if it leaks.
pump all hooked up. Even ran the lines for the vacuum side and the fuel side. I go all the way around to the carburetor and the cylinder head there. So uh, that's all set up. Now, the last thing I need to do to the tank, other than make mounts for it, is add the uh, vent to it. myself a shiny little bung here. Just gotta weld it onto the gas tank. And then the gas tank will be vented, so it'll actually, you know, work. Just shove the tungsten into the aluminum and it'll eventually stick. the gas tank, um, but before I fill it up with gas and do that, I kind of have to hook up all the stuff back to the engine so that we can find out if it, you know, so we can start up the engine and see if it's going to work to pump the fuel because it's not an electric pump. We can't just test it. The engine has to be actually running. It makes me want to scream. This wiring needs to be completely redone. Got the, uh, Wiring all hooked up, I think. So I'm gonna throw some gas in here and see if it holds gasoline. It held water, but you know, gasoline is significantly better at going through holes, to put it simply. I'll just pull the fuel line off so we can see if it's pumping. sounds so good. It's super loud, but it sounds so good. Mission fuel tank accomplished. Nice and minty. Well, that's uh, that's the gas tank. That was a big step that I've been uh, dreading for a while, just because I wasn't sure where I was gonna put the gas tank. But it's done now. It holds way more than I expected. Um, and the pump is all set up, which is really nice to have a pump that's mechanical, not electric, just, you know, less wires going everywhere, one less thing to have to worry about. Back at it with the Barbie camper today, and it's a frosty zero degrees outside. So uh, I'm gonna do something warm and do some welding. First off, I'm gonna just strip down the engine and pull it out because it's been a minute since I've had the engine out of here and I've added a bunch of stuff and I honestly don't even know if I can still take the engine out. Important to check that every once in a while. Uh, and then I'm gonna finish welding the exhaust pipe because I've only ever welded it uh, what I can reach with the engine in. I really can't believe how much wiring Kawasaki made for an ATV that's not even fuel injected. Why? All right. Well, that's out. Most of the reason was just to make sure that it still comes out with everything that's been added. And the answer is yes. So, yeah. Well up the exhaust. Maybe clean up some of this rust from all the fire extinguisher juice. And uh, do a couple welds while that's all apart. is all welded up. 
ready to go back in. Engine is nice and clean, also ready to go back in. The uh, chassis has been back here in the shop, you know, very close to the wood stove and there's still icicles on it. Nice! Tells you how cold it is out here. That's not an easy fit. Not exactly, no. So, this is the front drive shaft. It's kind of an interesting system. Um, just spline drive with a little bit of extra slip so that it can, you know, slide back to be able to come apart. Um, and then the front of it has these weird, like, rounded, tapered splines so that it can handle a little bit of side-to-side -side motion. I've got the engine scooted back as far as it'll go. And I measured the distance between this cup here and the front diff where it goes in. So I'm going to make it so that when it's fully compressed into itself and when the engine's all the way back, it'll just slide into there. And then that way when the engine goes forward into place, uh, it'll um, not be able to come back out. So that's, that's the goal. So right now this is about five and a half inches from the end of this cup to the end of the shaft there. So I need to take about two and a quarter inches out of it for it to be the right number. Making an adapter sleeve out of this chunk of mild hot rolled steel that I have laying around. Reduce the length of the shaft. Woo, fitness. all the argon earlier when I was welding things that don't really matter yet. Um, so now we're out. But I have a thought, and that's that it's extremely cold over here. If I take this argon bottle and I put it right next to the wood stove, it'll warm up, which will increase the pressure inside of it. And there can't be anything other than argon in there. It's just that there's no pressure to push it out right now. So there's still about that much argon. It just needs a little bit of increase in temperature. There's much, but there's smart on coming out. Well, it turns out my idea of putting this on the wood stove was dumb, not in the sense that it went wrong. It just didn't work because there's not enough in there to work. But I got it tacked. Um, let's just not even look at that. There's porosity everywhere from not having argon in there. So um, that's what it'll look like. But, uh, yeah, so we'll have to run to town and get some argon. Ah, yeah, not even close. Oh, yeah, because it's already empty. <laughs> well, that was dumb. Dude, now we're at Edwin's favorite place in the entire world. If you ever visit Sandpoint, Idaho, Joel's Mexican burritos this big for six dollars. All right. Oh, so exciting! I'm just thinking about everyone who hasn't seen this view before. <laughs> so you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> that is like how many pounds is that, Ethan? You're a good scale. That's about a pound. That's about a pound. They do play Sweet Home Alabama at Mexican restaurants here. It's crazy how much gas can weigh when you have like 4,000 PSI of it crammed into a bottle. Like I feel like a full bottle of argon weighs about twice as much as an empty one. Turns out TIG welding works a lot better when you have argon in the bottle. So now we got ourselves 
a solidly welded shaft. Grease to grease it and we can put it back together. How would you just look at that? We got ourselves a four wheel drive machine. In the words of Jeremy Clarkson, what a machine! Massage the V-band around a little bit as I tighten it to get it all, all snugged up. Now that I got the uh, engine back in, the drive shaft hooked up, and everything kind of put back together, I'm gonna throw the carburetors back in here because they have wiring on them, and I need to know where all the wiring's gonna go. And then I'm gonna start redoing all the wiring and getting it all situated and make some plates to like mount the computers and modules and whatnot. Yeah.